on the Friday before spring break, we talked about uh, stress and deviated wells. And so if you have a deviated well, you can define its orientation and angle of deviation with two angles, delta, which would be the azimuth of the toe of the well. Okay. And I say toe in the, in the sense that it could be completely horizontal. Right? So azimuth, delta is the azimuth of the toe of the well uh, in the plane of the earth, northeast, right? Uh, measured from north. And then delta is the angle of deviation. And it can go from 0 to 90. Okay. And we derive the rotation matrices then for those. So we're basically just reviewing what we did on that Friday. So we derived the rotation matrices, uh, and there it is. And so then you can go from the stress in the geographic coordinate system, uh, SG, stress of the geographic coordinate system, to the wellbore through this rotation. Or we're not often given the stress in the geographic coordinate system. We often know the principal stresses, right? So we know the principal stresses. And then we do a rotation, or remember, unrotation, if you will, from the principal stresses, which can be arbitrarily oriented, into the geographic coordinate system, and then from the geographic coordinate system out into the well board, so that we have the stress in the well. And so if you wanted to sort of do that all at once, you could build up your rotation matrices for the geographic coordinate system into the well board and just do this all at once. Now, the SB, the stress in the well bore, is in Cartesian coordinates. And usually when we're working in the well bore, it's more convenient to work in polar coordinates. And so these are the conversions from the Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates. Uh, where, you know, the, the one one, and by the way, these, these are effective stresses now. So Anytime I use the sigma, I'm talking about effective stress versus S, which is stress. So effective stress is S minus the pore pressure times the identity matrix. So these are comp the Cartesian components of the stress sensor. Uh, I plug it into these equations and you get the stress in the well bore, where theta is an angle around the, around the well bore. Um, Delta P is the difference in the pore pressure of the mud weight. So once we have the stress in the, in the polar coordinates in the well bore, we can compute the minimum, maximum tangential stresses. So these are going to be two of the principal stresses. The third is going to be sigma RR, which is equal to delta P of the well bore wall. The three principal stresses are the minimum, maximum, tangential stresses, and sigma r off. Those are your three principal stresses. And then if you have the three principal stresses, you can combine those with, let's say, more Coulomb failure criterion to determine if you're going to have a compressive failure or breakouts in the well. Okay. We talked about this lower hemisphere projection. So this is a way to look at, uh, so this is sort of an, an aerial view of the Earth. And these concentric rings are angles of deviation. And the, these are you know, just the plane in space, all right? So the idea here is that this was a lower, if this was a, the bottom side of the sphere, a, a lower hemisphere. And the well board was drilled through from the center through this uh, at the point where this crosses uh, at the point where the well bore, I think I drew a little picture. And all, again, this is all review from last time, but you know, if we have our Derek here and we drill a well, so the point at which this crosses, you can then plot on this. So if that well were drilled straight to the east, that would be sort of inside the 30 degree ring. This is the 30 degree deviation ring. so. It would be somewhere like that. Um, <coughs> if this were drilled straight to the west horizontally, uh, then you know you'd be out here. 